Welcome to the making of my very first hardcover hand-bound sketchbook. Now this is not a precise tutorial, but I will tell you what I am doing. You can either watch this video solely for your entertainment or it can also be seen as a learn from my mistakes experience because there will be lots of those. We began first off with cutting paper and I did so for all of the 16 sketchbooks in one go. So I spent one and a half days simply cutting paper and then folding it. Paper is cheaper in larger sheets, so I first use a rolling cutter for the broad cutting and then I use the Dala A3 guillotine and cut it down to A4 size paper sheets. I plant the paper colors and types meticulously. These are the four sets of the thematic sketchbooks I thought of. The brands I got them from are Fabriano Tiziano, Canson Mitaintis, Lana Colors, as well as Claire Fontaine Etival. All of them are 160 grams per square meter. And because it is artist paper, you can use all dry media on it and allegedly even some wet media such as gouache. But I will have to try that out myself in the future. When it comes to paper, I'm a bit skeptical. I guess we all had our bad experiences with paper that advertised itself as being a good paper for gouache. I will keep you posted on whether it passes my test. You just saw that I am using a reference book. It is from the London Centre for Book Arts and has a great overview, simple instructions. I am so far pleased with it and can recommend it. When you bind a book, you will probably have to sew it together with needle and yarn. And because paper can easily rip, you will use a pre-puncher, which is called an awl, and pre-punch the holes you will need for your needle. In order to assure that you can still punch through the paper and sew it together, you only have a certain amount of paper you can sew at the same time. This amount of folded paper that you are working on, one at a time, is called a signature. And my sketchbook contains four signatures. You somehow have to connect them, of course, and I'm using something called the French chain stitch to do so. You will see throughout the video that I'm using my book binding glue, which only comes in a pack of two pounds or one kilo as a weight. <laughs> and that's all I did that evening. Good morning. Thanks for joining me on another day. Yesterday I spent the evening discording with friends and still working on my little books and I'll show you what I got done in a second. Today the main focus will be the fantasy sketchbooks. I am hoping to finish one, maybe two hard covers so that they are fully done. I am in awe with this all. It is doing a great job and I definitely would recommend getting a good one with a tip that you can simply swatch, swap out. I finished sewing two sketchbooks. No, okay. <laughs> I think you saw it for a second. It is very cold today. Not outside, but in my flat. <laughs> so I'm just gonna wear some socks. I saw you inside. After cutting and folding the paper, enter the glue. I'm using mostly these clamps or the book binding press to hold my spine steady because now you need to glue the spine of your book. And while this is drying, I am preparing the end papers. End papers are very important for your book. They are what ultimately holds together the inside of your book and connects it with the book cover. In a second, after I review the fabric I'll be using, you can watch me in real time having a little breakdown because I rendered these end papers unusable. Now for this step, I honestly <laughs> don't use fresh gauze. Instead, I cut out an old bed sheet. You only need a piece of fabric, really. Not interested in buying the special bookbinder gauze. 
I need to place the end paper first. And they do not fit. They do not fit. I messed up. I had 50 times 70 centimeters of end paper and I ruined it all for one, <laughs> one sheet. This is what I left off before I went in, in the garden with the dog and also a second book where I am just about to put the fabric on there. I'm not quite sure how realistic my goal of two hardcovers this evening is but we'll just keep going. Take apart all the good things This is looking really good. Now we will get the wrapping for our book cover. I have a grey linen paper. It's not real linen, but it looks like linen. And it is especially for book covers. That is what we will use for the fantasy collection. I'll just take a look at the measurements once more because I don't want to mess it up. Alright. I cut out the book cover from cardboard, by the way, which is 3mm thick. You first want to glue the cardboard onto the wrapping of your book cover and then you fold and glue the flaps onto the cardboard. To make it look pretty, you cut off the edges of your cover paper in a 45 degree angle and keep a tiny bit of space just about one millimeter so that it still covers your cardboard edges and now we have to place the book in our book cover and glue it together as I mentioned you do so by applying glue onto your end paper first under the fabric then the fabric on top and glue on the fabric just glue everywhere on your end paper and then you slowly need to close the book and make sure there are no air bubbles in your end paper by using a bone folder or a very flat, not sharp piece you can use to apply pressure. And then you do so on the other side as well. Then you wanna make sure that all your creases at the spine fold inwards and you really want to do so carefully, Francis. Don't put too much pressure on it. Okay, big mistake. I tried to go over it with the bone folder and I ripped it. I can't believe it, no! And it's the front! <laughs> I was almost finished. It looks great, it looks good. Great book, just how I imagined. But dang, I messed up. I'm really angry at myself for not being cautious enough. I'll think of something and then I'll get back to you. All right, I have two different colors of this linen texture scrapbooking paper. It is quite thick, but it's 
better than having, well, a hole on there. Let's try this. I'm taking the measurement with a scrap piece of paper. This could look okay. I'm free bending it so that it doesn't have such a hard time going around the 180 edge. So these are the designs that will go on the cover of the sketchbook. And this one is the one for the fantasy version. My camera battery died the exact moment I had this glued up and I w was handling everything and wasn't able to change the battery. But this is how it turned out. I think, um, yeah, it looks like I wanted it to and I think it's, it's gonna be fine. I made this little stencil so that I would be able to place it in the center. I got the transfer paper, transfer the motif onto the sketchbook and then I will emboss it. If you watched any of my other videos, you've probably seen me emboss something before because I love it and do this quite often. But if you don't know what it is, uh, let me explain again. You take out something sticky, either a glue pen or an embossing pen or stencil, and then you sprinkle embossing powder on top of it. It will only stay on the sticky surface. You can clean it up with a brush and then you take out a heat tool and apply heat. Then your embossing powder will melt into place and it is really durable. This is it. Not that much on the cover. It is simply going all the way around. Very simple design with the lindworm on the front cover. A few thoughts on this book before I end this video. First off, I did not anticipate it to take this long. It might have been because I was double checking every step of the way. The sketchbook papers are exactly how I imagined them. I love the color assortment. I actually love them for all of them. I did heavy research before ordering the paper. <laughs> Therefore, there were no surprises. Everything looked like I was expecting it to. Many things I could do better, but for my first sketchbook, I am very happy with it. This is where I will end this video now. Uh, as always, I read every single comment. Anything you want to say or ask, leave down below in the comments. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.